Hi, my name's Kate Hemmings and I'm pleased to welcome you to the September issue of Quick and Crafty magazine. I'm joined by Corinne Brad, who's going to be demonstrating one of her favourite projects from this issue. Hi Corinne. Hello Kate. So what have you got for us today? Well, today we have some great free gifts. We've got some foam rubber stamps here. Um, and Jill Albus has come up with a selection of projects using them. Um, you've got gift bags and there's little pouches. They're very clean designs, quite contemporary. Um, but what's great, I mean, you look at the simplicity of this that. star. I love that, such a pretty little card. Well, yeah, she's used a metallic embossing powder, but it's got a glitter effect in it as well. And it really does make it stand out. Especially against the hot pink. I really yeah. like the colour combination I like she's that, the pink and the sunny yellow. You don't see that very often, no, but it is really, really beautiful. Effective. Um, as beautiful as this one is, I must admit my favourite project is this one by Brenda Harvey. Surprising. As you can see. Beautifully um, modelled. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, I love the silver stardust bead she's used, but obviously the main feature of this project is the beautiful mosaic beads here, which I've never actually seen no, before. No, well they look like they're, they're um, pieces of mother and of pearl that yeah. you've got an iridescence to them. I mean they're really beautiful and if you feel them they're so smooth. Yeah. They've obviously been polished afterwards. But they're lovely. You could do something similar I would imagine with polymer clay and, and shell chips if you had a lot of patience. That could be a whole other demonstration. So with somebody else, one. yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. I mean, you could wear that to a wedding or something because it's a very soft, yeah. sort of subtle yeah. set, isn't it? Very beautiful. Um, now, I know this is one of your favourites. I love favorites. that. That's Sarah Beeman's created that. And it's a real beautiful, um, eclectic mix of dress patterns and bits of haberdashery. I mean, there's some lovely scrapbooking papers now that are available that are in this sort of style. Um, it's great. I mean, the notebook there, if you've got someone in your family who's maybe looking to go to textile college, or, you know, you've just got somewhere you want to put down your own ideas. Um, but it really takes me back, to, me back to my childhood, because with the dress patterns that I think she's picked up at a car boot sale, and she's cut the designs out and decoupage, you know, used them on the front as flat decoupage, and also the um, dress forms that you can get as peel-off stickers. It but really is lovely. I mean, it it's is. really inspiring. If you look at that, she's got a little bit of tape measure here, a clothes label, a little bit from the pattern there. There's so much going on, mm. and yet it really works. The it card is beautiful busy. too. It is lovely, isn't it? Um, I know you also like this project here, which is by Tracy Dakin yes, Jones. Yes, yeah. Is that I right? mean, I love it. Look at the ribbon. I mean, I You've you know what, for I'm, ribbon, oh, you know you? what I'm like with ribbon. But this is great. And the great thing is with that ribbon is because it's on a, a wire I bind. When you open it, it doesn't actually get in the way. She's done this great thing with um, folded sections, so you can put little cards in to write people's birthdays. Did she used double-sided paper there for the effect. She's um, well, it's blank on the back, but you could use double-sided, and I mean just add keep adding to it as you've got more and more people's and birthdays put in there. Every craft needs to be organised, so oh, that's we'll a great, great it. project. But what I love about that, although there's loads of colour and there's loads of things going on, it's really again very clean. In fact, all the projects are really clean and up-to-date and really trendy this month. I like this part of it, I must admit. Just the way she's embellished the simple backing paper with the gems makes it really mm. look stylish. Very simple, but really works. Um, now, there's some great features coming up in Quick and Crafty this time around as well, yeah, aren't there? there is. Now, going, fashion going and bright back to colours. fashion and that, I mean, Quick and Crafty are always very good at keeping ahead of trends. So there's a lovely feature on corsages, which are really big again. Yeah, they're really key this year. And there's mm. another one that we will love, me especially. <laughs> um, cake decorating and sugar crafting, so something sweet. So look out for that one, because I know we definitely will be. I think you should be. be renamed Cake Hemmings, actually. <laughs> I you think have this thing about idea, cake, don't I you? Do. <laughs> Just like you have a thing about ribbon. Yeah. Now, talking of bright colours and all things sweet and lovely, you're mm. doing a fab demonstration for us today. Well, this is great. This necklace here is by the um, Bead Gallery. And That's what they've done is they've wired it? beautiful pastel buttons onto a coil of memory wire for this necklace. Yeah. And it's really simple to do. I mean, I love the, the combination that she's got here. I mean, I mean, I don't know about, I've got, look at all my buttons, look at my buttons. I've got jars of buttons <laughs> at home, and I never know what to do with them. I open them up, admire them, and put them back, so maybe I should have a go at this. Well, yeah, the great thing is, is if you make something like this, if you suddenly think, oh no, I really need those yellow buttons, you can just take it apart. Now, I'm just gonna show you how to make a bracelet. Okay. I've done it very quickly, and what I have done is, although it's on memory wire, is I've put a clasp on the back of it, because with the weight of those buttons, if you shake your hand, it could fly off. They are quite heavy, um, aren't they? Yeah, but it's very, very simple to do. If you get yourself um, a coil of memory wire and you just want it to be slightly larger than one coil, you will need some quite tough pliers to cut this. Okay. Um, I mean, this stuff is great. It's like a grown-up slinky. <laughs> so get your coil, and first of all, what you need to do is just bend over the ends so that you don't have any sharp pieces. Again, you will need really strong pliers. It's quite a sturdy, this, this kind yeah. of wire, isn't it? I mean, I've got some lovely little jewellery making pliers that are perfect for a more malleable wire, but you'll wreck them with some, memory wire. Need some hardcore so you just pliers. need some hardcore pliers. <laughs> so if you just bend the ends over like this, okay. and then that also leaves you a handy little loop to put your clasp on later. Um, now, this isn't an exact science, but what I'd recommend is you take a piece of wire that's about four times the circumference of your memory wire, just very roughly. 
so that's about is this one. A, is this a finer wire than the wire? Yeah, the I mean, this wire. is a very fine wire because you'll need it. It's almost like a, it's not quite as fine as crochet wire. Okay. But it's, um, I'd say it's well, about Well, you can what, see there it is it's mil. coiling quite easily, yeah. isn't it? So, say about four times as much. Okay. Cut it. The reason you want to get it as long as possible is so that you can, um, you don't have to keep joining the wire. Because if it's on your wrist, if you've got odd ends of wire, it will keep scratching, yeah. it will keep irritating you. Find the middle of your wire and just wrap it a couple of times around your coil. Okay? Yeah. Is this just to secure it in that, place? That's just to secure it in place. Take the other end, and while you're not using this other end, so it doesn't poke your eye out, just wind it up, up and give it a quick twist to hold that in place. And then you start with this end. Okay. So we'll start with a nice big button. And you can use two hole or four hole buttons. What I've done is I've tried to make sure that there's just two holes on the top. So if you have um, a yellow and then a purple and a green. Okay. Put it in one, put it back down. So it's just and like don't stitching. Forget, it is just like stitching. Don't forget that with a four hole button you need to put it in the diagonal hole. Okay. Otherwise it will look lopsided. Back through there. So you've got your stack. And then what you should be able to do is, provided you haven't bent your wire too much, pull it very tight, okay? And it is exactly like stitching. And then just wrap your wire. Oh, so you coil it around again to, is that again. for the space between the buttons? Yeah. And then take your next one. And you carry on around like that until you achieve something like this. And they will, they will move about, but once it's on your wrist, they will sit flat, sit flat on your against wrist. it. So then, for the end of it, if you just take your last couple of buttons, let's have a purple and a very small pale blue. That's the great thing, isn't it? Buttons come in so many great shapes yeah. now, you're not just... This is it. I mean, this is a collection of buttons that I've had now for years, and it, you know, it's just one of those things, you put them all in a tin, you kind of forget what's you in drop there. the tin on the floor. Oh, don't. <laughs> it's a little bit heartbreaking <laughs> yeah. when that happens. But uh, it's great because it means you get to sort them all out again. <laughs> when you've got to the very end, there's your loop. Okay. You just need to loop, leave that loop at the end of the button. You can slide these buttons along the wire okay. if you find that you've got lots of wire left over with. You can move them around a bit more because what you want to make sure is there's enough here to finish the bracelet. And then you just very tightly, you need to get that coil out of the way, very tightly wrap this around the loop several times. So it's quite a simple technique, oh, it's it just is, quite yeah. fiddly. Use decent quality wire because you're going to have to pull it quite hard okay. to make sure that the beads, are, uh, the beads, the buttons are all It would be a little tight. bit disheartening if you got to the end oh, and it snapped. it snapped. And then what you do is if you just trim off that end of wire with your pliers and then use your round nose pliers just to make sure that that end is not rough and tuck it in. What you can do also, you can always put a piece of clear nail varnish or something over the top, a good dollop. And also, when you put it on your wrist, you'll feel if it's yeah, scratching. Yeah, so you can go back and mend so it. So you do that end, you finish off this end, and then, as I say, what you do is you just link a clasp with jump rings into the two loops. Because you've got ready-made sort of yeah. findings there, I mean, I've now you? found that that's big enough, I can put that on without having to undo the clasp, but it's just a, a fail-safe, really. Stop okay. it flying off. Well, that looks great. Very I can't believe how simple really that bright. is and how yeah, quick. No, I mean, great. And you can combine so many different colours there as you have. Oh, yeah. Or you could use the same buttons the whole way around because you get those beautiful sort of shell yes. mother of pearl yeah. buttons. That would oh, also be really effective. Oh, some of the buttons would be beautiful. Beautiful. We don't need any encouragement, <laughs> Anyway, thanks for stopping by and showing us That's that okay. demonstration. Thank you for I'll me. definitely be having a go. That's all we've got time for here today. But once you've read your Quick and Crafty magazine, do come along to www.quickandcrafty.com for our full video archive and big competitions. Until next time, 